the International Soccer Preview. We are Soccer Files Canada. Welcome to our continuation of Series 19. This one looking at the players of the 2023 Asian Cup due to be played in January 2024. This episode is looking at the players of the UAE. Here we go! Hello and welcome to the International Soccer Preview by Soccer Files Canada. I'm Kevin and this is Series 19 on the players of the 2023 Asian Cup, played in 2024. Uh, this episode covers UAE or United Arab Emirates players. And we're doing this media cast in two parts. Part one is a look at the candidates for the squad and their likelihood of making it. Uh, we think we went into too much detail in previous player media casts we've done. So we're aiming for a lighter, more listener-friendly, uh, kind of a narrative version this time. Uh, part two will come out when the squad lists are released and the final squad selected. We think that'll be in late December or early January. At that time, we'll go back over the list that we create this time and see who made it and who didn't. And we'll also cover a couple of other things that I'll talk about uh, at the end of the uh, media cast here. We've made a separate video on what we will be covering over the next nine months. YouTube watchers can see that link uh, on the screen right now, and it can also be found in the show notes for both watchers and listeners. In short, we're focused on the Asian and African Cups, with both taking place in early 2022. So we have also started uh, coverage of World Cup 2026 qualifying. All right, well, this episode has three sections. In section one, we're going to give uh, and discuss some general information on the team. Section two is the main part where we look at the main candidates in each position and their likelihood of uh, making the squad. And section three, uh, where we give any closing thoughts and we will preview uh, part two in a bit more detail. Okay, well, I am sorry, uh, UAE fans, I do not have a shirt from your country. So my proxy shirt, uh, the next closest thing, is uh, this Wales shirt, which actually is mainly red with uh, white striping and a, a splash of green. So I think I'm getting close color-wise. And uh, I lived in Wales for 10 years, so um, uh, that kind of justifies, it doesn't justify it at all, really. I feel shame. The UAE is mostly white with red striping and maybe uh, splashes of green or black. Uh, but I have failed, uh, my dear listeners, and I will work on getting my collection built up. Okay, nevertheless, let's begin on uh, UAE with section one and uh, some general uh, information. So we start with some uh, observation on the squads observation and we have two uh, the first is the many managerial changes that they've been through over the past four years and there have been quite a few of them uh, the manager uh, during the 2019 asian cup which at uae hosted by the way was alberto zaccaroni he had been their manager from 2017 and his contract was not renewed uh, after the cup they didn't do particularly bad they reached the semi-finals there um, but uh, anyway, they didn't fire him. His contract expired. Uh, next, they selected uh, Bert van Marwijk, uh, Netherlands manager. Uh, he was there for 2019, and we'll come back to him, as UAE did, uh, just in 2019. And then they replaced him with uh, Ivan Jovanovic, a Serbian manager. He was there from 2019 uh, to 20. In 2020, he was replaced by Jorge Luis Pinto, a Colombian manager. Uh, he didn't last long. And uh, after him, they brought back in Bert Van Marwijk again. So his second stint, he actually lasted two years there from 2020 to 2022. Uh, but they got rid of him again and brought in an Argent uh, Argentinian uh, um Rudolfo Arua Barena, sorry, uh, Rudolfo Arua Barena uh, from 2022 to 23. 
And uh, that is all behind now because from July 2023, they uh, got Paolo Bento. So we'll introduce him in a bit more detail when we get to managers. Uh, but at this point, the important thing is that they got a new manager fairly shortly before the cup. And uh, that brings us to our second point, uh, our second observation is that he has made quite a few changes or he has uh, specifically dropped veterans from the team. So we're not sure what this means. Uh, some of these players have been with the team for so long, it's kind of hard to imagine that he would not uh, bring them to the cup. But they have been dropped over the last few games, the last three games uh, in September and October and uh, some new players have come in. So we'll see the details of that uh, when we go through the candidates, but a bit of confusion as to uh, kind of which class of those two he'll bring to the cup. Maybe he's just looking for uh, some fresh names and to strengthen the team, or maybe he really is dropping these veterans, uh, which would be a surprise. Uh, but it does make it a bit difficult for us to determine how likely um, the players who've been dropped or the players who've come in recently, uh, how likely they are to make it to the cup. Okay, let's take a look at uh, some of the retirements that they've had and uh, since 2019. So four years is quite a long time in soccer, but wow, uh, they have uh, quite a few retirements even considering that. And uh, we'll just go through them. So these are, are uh, uh, just veterans that we're going to focus on here. And uh, the first one is goalkeeper uh, Majed Nasser. Uh, Majed Nasser was with the team since 2005, and he had 82 caps. And he was a starter in the 2007, 2011, and 2015 Asian Cups. He last appeared for the team in March 2022. So that's a fairly recent retirement as far as it goes. Uh, the next one is left back uh, Mahmoud Kamiz. Uh, Mahmoud Kamiz was with the team since 2007, and he had 60 caps and um, actually didn't appear in any tournaments, surprisingly. Uh, also retired in March 2022, so another fairly recent retirement there. Uh, next one is Amr Abdul Rahman. And uh, Amer Abdul Rahman was with the team from 2009 and had 77 caps. And he was a uh, starter in the 20, uh, 2011, 15, and 19 Asian Cups. Um, but he retired um, after the Asian Cup in 2019. So he's he's gone uh, for a while and they have, time, have had time to replace him. Uh, the next one is Kamis Esmail. Uh, he has 76 caps from 2012 and was also a starter in the 2015 and 2019 Asian Cups. He last appeared for the team in October 2020. Uh, attacking midfielder Ismail Al Hamadi. Uh, from 2007, he had 121 caps, uh, is still playing club soccer, and... Um, he was a starter in the 2019 uh, Asian Cup, but just a sub in the 2015 Asian Cup. And a starter in the 2011 Asian Cup too. He last appeared uh, for the team, Ismail Al Hamadi, in uh, December 2019. So played for about a year after that Asian Cup. And uh, uh, next one is Omar Abdul Rahman. Omar Abdul Rahman has uh, 79 caps for the national team since 2011. And um, he was um, amazing in the 2015 Asian Cup, uh, named to the team of the tournament and a very outstanding tournament. However, he was injured for the 2019 Asian Cup. And uh, he has a bit of a strange story here. He uh, was off the team for two and a half years and then returned in May of 2022, uh, but just subbed in for two games and then was off the team again. So that was uh, a year and a half ago. Uh, uh, so uh, I don't think he's officially retired, but um, we're considering him retired here. Uh, we have a couple more still. Ahmed Khalil. 
uh, with the team since 2008, 108 caps and 51 goals, and uh, um, a starter in the uh, uh, 2011 15 Asian Cups and a sub in the uh, 2019 Asian Cup. He last appeared for the team in December of 2019. And uh, finally, Ismail Matar, uh, with the team since 2003 and captain of the team, 135 caps and 35 goals. So he uh, dates all the way back to the 2004 Asian Cup there and uh, uh, continued uh, up until the 2019 Asian Cup where he was actually just a substitute. And uh, he last appeared for the national team in uh, December of 2019, uh, the Arab Cup tournament that they played then. So that is a lot of retirements, of course. Um, apart from a couple of them, even the ones who retired in 2022, they've had uh, time to replace. But uh, that is a lot of big names to lose. And it's not out of the question that um, one or two of them will come back. But... Um, uh, generally, they seem to be off the team. Okay, let's uh, take a uh, look at the club affiliations. And actually, all the players are based in the uh, UAE, and they have little temp uh, temptation to leave because they're well paid. Uh, the league itself is reasonably strong. Uh, Al Ain reached the final of the 2016 a AFC Champions League, uh, but since then, Though teams regularly kind of reach the final stages, the round of 16 there, only one team has passed it. Uh, so uh, let's look at the main clubs that the players are coming from. Usually I try to limit this to three, but uh, I kind of had to put five in here. Uh, the first one is Al Ain, which we just mentioned. Uh, Al Jaziri, Shabab Al Ali, Sharja, and Al Wassel. So those are the uh, clubs that uh, the majority of their players are coming from. Uh, in terms of pl uh, players playing outside of the country, uh, none of them do. All right, so we move on to uh, recent games. And uh, we're looking over the past two years because that's what we're going to look at uh, in terms of participation for the players in the main section. So let's see uh, what games were played uh, over that time. So in... Um, January to March uh, 2022, they had um, World Cup 2022 uh, qualifiers, uh, and those teams were Syria, Iran, Iraq, and South Korea. And they actually, uh, their run continued into June because uh, UAE reached the Regional Cup playoff, so they had a playoff against Australia uh, in June 2022. They lost that playoff, and that was the end of their journey. Uh, after that, they had a few friendlies. So we had uh, one friendly in May of 2022. That was actually before the uh, Regional Cup playoff there. Two friendlies in September 2022. Uh, surprisingly, none in October of that year. But uh, two in November and two in December. And uh, in May, it was Gambia. In September, Paraguay and Venezuela. November, Argentina and Kazakhstan and in December, Lebanon. I should have mentioned that as I was going. Uh, moving on to 2023, uh, they had the Gulf Cup in January of 2023. So uh, three games there. And it was uh, uh, Bahrain, Kuwait, and Qatar, uh, the three games in January. Uh, after that, they had uh, just friendlies. So two friendlies in March of 2023. Those are against Tajikistan and Thailand. And uh, in between there, the new manager uh, came out. So I'll, I'll just put that in there. Um, new manager in July of that year. Uh, we could go through all the new managers that they had, um, uh, that they had uh, during that period, but there's not much point. But this one is significant. Uh, new manager from July. Uh, and after that, they had uh, three games. There was one in September against Costa Rica, and then two in October 
uh, against Kuwait and Lebanon. So those uh, that new manager change quite significant, as we uh, mentioned, bringing in some new players and leaving off some veterans. Uh, let's take a look at the formation. So um, uh, I won't go into too much detail. They did experiment a bit uh, in friendlies, especially. Uh, but generally, they always came back to a 4-2-3-1. So uh, that's probably the way uh, we should think of them. Um, in some of the friendlies, they tried a 4-1-4-1 or a 4-5-1. Uh, and and uh, even with those patterns, it's still four at the back and one up front. So they don't vary uh, too much. There's a little bit of variation uh, uh, they've sometimes played a 4-3-3, or recently they played a 4-2-2. So uh, maybe we should uh, put that one up um, uh, because it's recent. So 4-2-3-1 four, uh, four, uh, for the most part. I'll actually talk about the last uh, five games. Or in the last seven games, it's been a 4-2-3-1 uh, for six of them. And then against Kuwait in October, they tried a 4-4-2. Uh, under the new manager, so two forwards there. But uh, nevertheless, when we talk about them uh, envisioning a 4-2-3-1, um, we'll get you there. Finally, we look at upcoming games, and they begin their World Cup 2026 qualifiers in November. Um, so uh, in October, there was a preliminary round of uh, World Cup qualifying, and we, we covered those games in media casts. Um, in fact, they are playing the winner of one of those games in their, in their first game on November 15th, and that's Nepal. Nepal beat Laos uh, in that preliminary round, uh, which only the weakest teams in the region uh, had to undergo. And their second game in November, on November 20th, is away in Bahrain. So November 15th, at home to Nepal. They can probably afford to experiment a little bit there. Uh, November 20th, uh, Bahrain in, uh, uh, in Bahrain. So uh, they should be using their best players uh, there. Uh, teams usually schedule a few friendlies before the tournament. Um, but uh, no further matches have been scheduled as of yet. So maybe when we get closer, and we are thinking of doing an update podcast uh, for the teams if there's enough uh, information. All right, that brings us to the end of part one and to the beginning of part two, our main business where we look at the candidates and we begin with the managers. And, um, uh, well, I'll just put... Uh, Bert Van Marwick's name uh, up there, even though he wasn't the most recent manager, he was the most recent long-term manager. Uh, but we won't uh, really go into detail on uh, on Bert Van Marwick, so we'll kind of uh, color him red here to indicate that he's gone. What we will focus on is the new manager, Paolo Bento. So uh, Paolo Bento uh, has recently come off of uh, managing South Korea through the um, through the recent World Cup, where they actually did uh, at the last second pass the group stage. So that would be considered a success, I think. And uh, he was with South Korea from 2018 to 2022. Uh, he's coached various clubs in in various countries in China. Greece and Brazil, but he was also the manager of the Portugal national team from 2010 uh, to 2014, and he took them through both the Euro 2012 and the, the World Cup in 2014. So Paulo Bento, a new manager from July of uh, UAE. Okay, let's begin with goalkeepers in terms of players. And we're going to actually list the players first, and you can uh, hear their names. And then we'll go back over uh, especially the, uh, the uh, definite and likely candidates and give a bit more bio information on them than on the uh, possible candidates. Uh, anyway, if their name is in black, that means they've been through a tournament, and if it's in grey, it means they haven't been through a tournament. And I'll just begin uh, where we uh, talked about retired players. So uh, Majid Nasser, 
uh, retired, uh, last played in March of 2022. So that's actually within the range of the two years that we're looking at. Uh, so uh, these players kind of coming in to replace him. We have definite candidate Khalid Isa and definite candidate Ali Kassif. And then we have three possible candidates, uh, Khaled Ta uh, Tawheed, Adel al Hosani, and Khaled Al-Sanani. And uh, we actually have one possible but unlikely candidate, and that's uh, Mohammed Al-Shamsi. Uh, but he last appeared in November 22. Uh, I don't think we're even going to put him on the list there. And we also have Hassan Hamza, who uh, he played. Um, my sources actually disagreed on whether he played a game or not. But uh, his name did come up. Uh, but he, he seems to be off the squad now. So let's deal with these uh, five candidates and begin with uh, Khalid Aisa. So he's been with the team since 2011 and has 67 caps. Um, and uh, he uh, plays for Al Ain in... Um, uh, plays for Al Ain in the UAE, but I'm actually not even going to mention club names here because they all play in the UAE, and uh, I don't think most listeners will really differentiate uh, among the teams that are there. So uh, Khalid Aisa, though, uh, was uh, part of the team in the 2015 Asian Cup, um, um, where he actually played one game, and... Uh, part of the 2019 Asian Cup where he was the starter. So um, he has started 14 of their 19 games over the past two years and was on the bench for three. And he was not selected for two matches, but those were the first two matches in the period. So actually it looks like he took over the starting position from Majid Nasa even, uh, even at that time, even at the time or before the Asian Cup in 2019. And he uh, continues to be the starter. Uh, we have Ali Kastif, and uh, even though he's a backup keeper for sure, uh, we have him as a definite candidate because uh, we think he will definitely be at the Cup. He has started four of their 19 games from uh, uh, over the past two years and on the bench for 11 and not selected for four. But he certainly seems to be uh, the second string keeper here. And uh, an interesting story actually with uh, Ali Kassif. He's been with the team since 2009 and has 59 caps, which is quite a lot. In terms of tournaments, he was on the roster for the 2011 Asian Cup, uh, but didn't see any action. For the 2015, he seemed not only to be uh, selected and the starter, but uh, uh, one source listed him as the captain of the team. Uh, but then he was uh, replaced um, by another keeper for reasons unknown, uh, presumably an injury. Uh, so uh, whatever the, the full story is there, I'm not sure. By the time the Asian Cup in 2019 rolled around, he was uh, the backup keeper and uh, was on the bench but didn't see any action, uh, which may well be the case here. But definite to reach the Cup, we think, Ali Kassif. Uh, the three um, possible candidates are uh, we'll begin with Khaled Tawheed. So he's very young, just 19 years old, and doesn't have any caps yet. He uh, just appeared on the bench in October, so came in under Paolo Bento uh, there, maybe being tried out um, and a possible candidate to reach the cup. Similarly, Adel al Hosani, uh, our next candidate, uh, was um, on the team since 2019, uh, and started none of their games over the past two years, but was on the bench, uh, including in September of 2023. So that's why we put him as possible. It looked like he was kind of off the team, uh, but then he popped up in September. Finally, we have Khaled Al-Sanani, and um, he's been with the team just since 2023, so uh, brand new, just like Khalid Tawheed. And uh, he got his first appearance on the bench actually way back in uh, 2018. He's 34 years old, 
uh, but just um, um, got his first cap. Uh, he had appeared, as I say, on the bench in August 2018, and then after a more, more than a four and a half year absence, returned in January, uh, or less than four and a half years, in January of 2023, uh, and didn't start any games, but was on the bench for five, uh, and then not selected under the new manager, Paolo Bento. So, um, um, not there for the last three matches. So, uh, Khaled Al Sanani. So, uh, those are the five candidates, and uh, this is a we'll kind of summarize with a narrative. So, uh, it looks like uh, Khalid Aisa is the starter and Ali Kasif is the backup, and that will go into the cup. However, even there, there's a little bit of doubt because recently uh, Aisa has been kind of sharing starts with Ali Kasif. So, it is possible that uh, um, Kasif could be the starter. Anyway, we think two of them uh, are sure to make the cup. The real issue is the third string keeper, and there's a story there. Uh, veteran Majed Nasir was out of the picture in March 2022. Then it looked like Al Shamsi, but he was out in November 2022. And Al Sanani uh, looked likely, uh, but he was out in March 2023. And um, Al Hosani uh, came back in uh september uh so he's making a bid for the position and then the young uh tawhid uh, uh brought in in october so the uh, third string position seems quite decided whereas uh, the top two seem fairly certain okay let's move on to defenders and we're going to begin with uh central defenders and we have uh two uh definite candidates in khalid uh, al hashemi and uh, in uh, Khalifa Al Hamadi. Um, and actually, I should put Khalifa Al Hamadi first there because um, he's uh, more of a starter. Uh, a likely candidate in uh, Walid uh, Abbas and in Abdullah Idris. Uh, both of those likely. And then we have uh, possible candidates in Mohammed Al Atas and Omar Al Balushi. And then uh, a possible but unlikely character or candidate, we'll just mention by name at this point Abdullah Al Hashmi, uh, but we won't put him on the list unless he appears on the final roster. So let's go back and look at these candidates. So uh, we begin with Khalifa Al Hamadi. So he is a real fixture in the squad, uh, even though he's just 20, uh, 25, oh, he's 25 years old. And um, uh, he uh, was, uh, he started 17 of their 19 games over the past two, uh, two years. So uh, uh, a definite candidate there. And uh, not selected though for the last two matches. So he's one of those, candidates where it would be hard to imagine him not being called up to the cup given his consistency of starts but then uh, 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 we have a bit of doubt uh, but I'm going to stick with the definite on him because again it would be shocking if he wasn't brought. Uh, as far as his uh, uh, cup history goes he was uh, part of the Asian Cup in 2019 uh, but only as a substitute. Um, there. Okay, and the next uh, player is Khalid Al Hashemi, and he uh, got his first appearance on the bench in March of 2022 and started four of their remaining 17 games and uh, subbed in for four and was on the bench for nine others. So he was called up for all 17 games over the past two years. So even though uh, uh, he only started four games, and uh, was on the bench for more than half of them, uh, we think it's definite that he'll be called up. That's Khalid Al Hashemi. The uh, likely candidate, uh, first one, is Walid Abbas, or Walid Abbas Al Balushi. And he has been with the team since 2008 with 112 caps. So he's a veteran. He's actually 38 years old. So his age is probably the biggest concern. However, he has started 10 of their 19 games over the past two years and was on the bench for one uh, and not selected for eight matches. Uh, 
Uh, however, that includes four of the last five matches. So once again, we see the veterans uh, not really called up uh, under Paolo Bento. Um, but again, given, given his consistency of appearances, uh, we consider him likely at this point. Uh, Walid Abbas was uh, a substitute uh, in the 2019 Asian Cup, uh, but gained a starting position uh, towards the end there. And actually, he dates back as far as the 2011 Asian Cup, where he was a starter. So Walid Abbas, uh, likely to reach the Cup, but actually having uh, having just gone through the explanation, I'm tempted to move him down to possible, uh, partly because of his age there, 38 years old. Anyway, we'll leave him where he is for now. And the next candidate is Abdullah Idris. So Abdullah Idris uh, got his first appearance on the bench in January 2022. And he returned, uh, though, um, after a 13-month absence in March 2023. And from there, started all five of their remaining games uh, to October uh, which is where we're at now. By the way, we're doing this at the end of October. So um, uh, we have uh, up until the October friendlies covered. Um, and as I mentioned, he was on the bench in January 2022, but actually got his first cap in 2023. Uh, but only started once as a, uh, as a central defender and has played uh, as a left defender. Um, as we'll see, they don't have many candidates there, so he has moved over to left defense. So we'll move him, um, uh, we'll move him um, if he plays there, there in November. I think it'll be important to look at the November games to see who they select. Anyway, uh, moving on, we have Mohammed Al Atas at a, as a possible candidate. And, um, he uh, has been with the team since 2019 with 26 caps and started six of their 19 games uh, over the past two years and was on the bench for three, um, including the last two matches. Uh, but he wasn't selected for 10 matches. So basically, he has been off the team for most of 2023, but then came back to sit on the bench for the last two matches. So uh, leaving us a bit confused as to, uh, he seemed to be off the team, now he's back on. Uh, we have Mohamed al Atas as a possible candidate. And finally, the brand new Omar Al-Balushi. So he's uh, 21 years old, and he got his first appearance in October 2023, so just a couple of weeks ago there. Uh, he didn't start either of the remaining two games, but he was on the bench for both of them. So uh, uh, coming into the picture is uh, Omar Al-Balushi. So we have uh, six candidates there, and they usually bring five or six uh, to the cup. They may bring one more uh, if Abdullah Idris turns out to uh, be a left back for them. Uh, okay, so a bit of a uh, a bit of a um, narrative here. So uh, the uh, Al Hamadi is a fixture uh, in the defense, so he's kind of always there. Uh, but accompanying him, because uh, there's two central defenders in the four-man backline, are a variety of others, including some out of position players uh, on top of the ones we saw here. So we have um, Al Atas quite a bit in 2022. Uh, Mohammed Al Atas, and then uh, Walid Abbas was there, uh, but he disappeared from March to September. Uh, so then we had a variety of players: uh, Idris, who's here, Hashemi, uh, Hashemi, or right back Abdul Salam Mohammed, who we will meet soon. But then Walid Abbas returned for the last game. Um, so uh, uh, that's the situation in central defense. In short, it basically is um, uh, Khalifa Al Hamadi uh, plus someone else, plus one of the other candidates, not even necessarily a central defender. Okay, let's move on to the left backs. And we already noted that we're uh, kind of uh, short of candidates here. And part of the reason we're short of candidates is because the retired player that we mentioned at the beginning. Uh, Mahmoud Kamis has not really been replaced 
Uh, and so we only have two possible candidates and then one uh, or, or two players who seem possible but unlikely. So at the possible level, our first candidate is Al Hassan Salah. Uh, and he uh, has been with the team since 2018, but only 12 caps. Uh, he only started one of their 19 games over the past two years, was subbed in for one and on the bench for one. So uh, not selected for uh, 16 matches. However, uh, the game he was on the bench for was in September 2023. So that's uh, recent and he may be back in the picture. Uh, that's why we have him as a possible candidate. He was actually a starter in the uh, 2019 Asian Cup, Al Hassan Salah. Uh, the other possible candidate is Abdul Rahman Salah, and he um, got his first cap in September 2023 uh, and has started none of the, uh, re uh, the remaining three games after that. Uh, his cap was as a substitute for one of them, and then he was on the bench for the two others. So what seems to be happening here is uh, they haven't found a replacement for Mahmoud Kamiz. They've been using a uh, central defender, um, uh, Idris, uh, but are bringing players in recently, uh, Al Hassan Saleh and Abdurrahman Saleh, to uh, try them out. Uh, it seemed like they did try out a couple of candidates. These are our possible but unlikely ones. Um, Shaheen Abdul Rahman uh, was um, uh, kind of tried out, uh, but not selected for the last nine matches anyway. And then uh, Badr Abdelaziz uh, was new in December 2022 and looked like he was making a bid, the 22-year-old, but they're not selected for the last five games. So seems like they have been uh, searching around uh, for a left-back and not really finding one. So it looks like Adriz may be uh, the left-back at the Cup. Okay, let's go to the right-backs and uh, we begin with, uh, we have uh, likely candidates over here. We have uh, Khaled uh, Ibrahim, and uh, we have Abdulaziz Heikal, or Abdulaziz Heikal Al Balushi, and then we have three possible candidates in Ahmed Abdullah Jamil, Abdul Salam Mohammed, and Bandar Mohammed, and uh, we'll also talk about. Uh, a couple of possible but unlikely candidates. Uh, Fala Walid uh, came in in September, but he hasn't been selected since the Arab Cup in January 2023. So Fala Walid doesn't make our list. And uh, Abdullah Al Karbi uh, got just one cap in March of 2023, but not selected after that. So he also doesn't make our list. Uh, so let's go back and look at the players here. Uh, Khaled um, Ibrahim. And he actually uh, has played several times as a left back as well. So uh, he also may be the starter in the left back position. Um, I should have mentioned him when we did that, but uh, he's coded as a right back and he's been with the team since 2022 and has 11 caps uh, already, so that's quite good. Uh, he got his first cap in May of 2022, uh, started 11 matches and subbed in for one. So just three matches that he wasn't selected for and um, uh, looks like a likely candidate, Khalid Ibrahim. And next we have Abdulaziz Haikal, and he has been with the team since 2011 with 39 caps and one goal. Uh, he started four of their games over the past two years, and he was subbed in for five others and on the bench for seven. So that makes it just three matches that he wasn't selected for. So he looks like more of a sub than a starter, but we have him as a likely candidate uh, to, to get to the cup. And uh, in the Asian Cup 2015, he was uh, kind of a bench player, but he did start two games there. Uh, but he wasn't selected for the uh, 2019 Asian Cup. So Abdulaziz Haikal, uh, or Haikal, I should say, um, 
uh, well, we would have had him as a definite candidate, but the three matches that he wasn't selected for were the last three, again, under the new manager. So uh, here, too, we feel it would be odd to dump someone who has been so consistently playing for the team. Um, uh, but uh, who knows what the situation is under the new manager. And Abdulaziz Haikal also uh, filled in a couple of times as the left back. All right, uh, let's look at the possible candidates. I'm Ahmed Abdullah Jamil, and he got his first cap in September of 2022 and started five of the remaining 13 games and was subbed in for three. So that looks good, but uh, he wasn't selected for the last five matches. So played eight games in a row and then not selected since March 2023. So we can only put uh, Abdullah Oh, sorry, Ahmed Abdullah Jamil as a possible candidate here. Next one is Abdul Salam Mohammed, and uh, he uh, got his first appearance on the bench in January 2022, and he started two of the remaining games uh, and subbed in for two besides and was on the bench for four uh, and was not selected for 11 matches. He, too, not selected for the last three matches, so... Uh, perhaps the manager making big changes here. Um, Abdul Salam Mohammed, uh, just a possible candidate. And then uh, Bandar Mohammed is our last possible candidate. He started four of their 19 games uh, uh, from over the past two years, subbed in for one and was on the bench for three, uh, but not selected for the uh, 11 others. So he was actually the regular uh, right back until early December 2022. He's been with the team since 2015 and has 45 caps uh, and was a regular right back, uh, but then not selected after September uh, 2022. So seemed to be off the team, but then confusingly came back to the bench, uh, came back for one bench appearance in September 2023. So we have to uh, kind of reinstate him as a possible candidate Bandar Mohammed. Okay, and we talked about the two possible but unlikely candidates, but we're not putting them on the list because they've been off the team for too long. So let's finish on right backs with a kind of a summary and a narrative. So Bandar Mohammed was the regular right back until early 2022 when Khalid Ibrahim came in and basically uh, seized the position. So Khalid Ibrahim is usually there, but as I mentioned, sometimes uh, switches over to the left side. And when he does, it's uh, Ahmed Abdullah Jamil who replaces him. So a few others have been tried out for uh, single games, but generally it is Jamil as the backup in this position. Okay, that brings us to... Uh, actually, we do have one player coded as a... Uh, a, a general defender in other words he's so new that we're not really sure where he fits in in the defense but he did appear on the bench in october uh, 2023 that's abdullah al hashmi and uh, he's just 2020 uh, sorry 22 years old but that's as much as we'll say of him at this point we won't add him to the list because um uh, let me see, uh, got his first appearance on the bench in October, uh, didn't start any of the games, but was on the bench for one, so the first game in October, and not selected for the one other, so that's why we have him as uh, possible but unlikely. Uh, again, we'll bring him back if, uh, if he makes the uh, final squad and maybe to uh, say a bit more about him. Okay, let's move on to uh, the midfield, and we're going to do uh, we, we're going to kind of consider defensive midfielders and attacking midfielders as one because they switch around quite a bit. There's not a lot of distinction uh, between them, but actually uh, in the UAE they uh, they kind of are. Some of the central midfielders play as uh, central attacking midfielders from time to time. And sometimes they do have a formation like the 4-1-4-1 we mentioned, or actually the 4-2-1-3 uh, are kind of more defensive midfielders, although we will see central midfielders uh, there uh, too. But uh, we'll go according to the, the way the players are coded. And we have a definite candidate in... Um, 
in uh, Majid, uh, Majid Rashid and uh, two possible candidates in Ali Salmin and uh, Yahya Nader and then two uh, or three possible candidates in Abdullah Hamad, uh, Majid Hassan and Ahmed Mahmoud, Mahmoud. And uh, we'll take a look at the possible but unlikely ca uh, candidates uh, as we go through this to see if they should make the list. But let's go back to Majid Rashid. He's been with the team since 2022, but um, uh, has 11 caps. He's just 23 years old. He got his first appearance on the bench actually in October 2021. But over the past two years, he started seven of their 19 games uh, and was subbed in for four and on the bench for six. So just two matches uh, that he wasn't selected for. And those two matches were early in the two-year period we're talking about. So uh, basically is always called up, though not always a starter. And he, uh, though coded as a defensive midfielder, has played as an attacking midfielder also. Uh, next is the likely candidate Ali Salmin and uh, he has been with the team since 2014 and is a veteran with 54 caps and uh, he started seven of their 19 games over the past uh, two years, was subbed in for three and on the bench for one and not selected for eight uh, others and that includes seven of the last nine matches. So. Uh, kind of looked like actually he was uh, off the team and then popped up for uh, two matches recently. So um, given his history, we consider him a, a likely candidate, but it is a bit confusing that he was off the team for seven of the last nine matches. Um, he was a starter in the 2019 Asian Cup uh, and uh, partly because of that reputation, we consider him a likely candidate. Okay, next one is uh, Yahya Nader. Uh, so he got his first appearance on the bench in November 2021, but uh, got his first cap in 2022. He started three of their 19 games over the past two years and was subbed in for one and on the bench for four and then not selected for uh, 11 others. So you may be wondering why he's a likely candidate. And the reason is because he started the last three games. So it uh, seems to be well liked by uh, manager Bento. But again, we don't know if a new player like this is gonna displace an old player uh, like Salmin uh, or a veteran player like Salmin. And that's really the question uh, with UAE. So we basically have them both as likely candidates, but I wouldn't be surprised if one is sacrificed for the other. Uh, meanwhile, we have three possible candidates. We have Abdullah Hamad. So uh, I'll just actually kind of move through these a bit faster and say that uh, he was uh, not selected for the last three games. So he has eight caps with the national team and did start four over the two-year period, but was not selected for the last three games. The next one, Majid Hassan. Um, uh, is a veteran actually since 2012 with 68 caps uh, but he also was not selected for the last seven games so he hasn't been selected since the first game of the Gulf Cup in January uh, although he had started six of their uh, games over the past two years and subbed in for three it's just that uh, towards the end here that's a long time to be off the team so we have Majed Hassan now as a possible candidate and finally we have Ahmed Mahmoud and uh, got his first appearance on the bench in October 2023 and didn't start either of the games but was on the bench for one and not selected for the other so actually for me uh, uh, it's possible but unlikely well hard to say when someone shows up at the end like this i see the contradiction because the other defender we put as possible but unlikely but somewhere in between anyway ahmed mahmoud uh, uh kind of popping in late here and may or may not make the team 
And finally, we have a uh, uh, portable but unlikely uh, Bilal Youssef. He came and went in March 2023, uh, called up and then uh, not called up after that. And uh, Mu Mubarak Zama uh, came and went in September 2023. So he got his first cap uh, as a substitute there, but then wasn't called up for the... Uh, um, October games, so perhaps one for the future in Mubarak Zama because he's just 20 years old. Okay, let us uh, look at central midfielders before we summarize this section. And uh, we begin with the real staple in the central midfield, Abdullah Ramadan. So he's a definite candidate here. We'll talk about him more. And uh, we then have uh, three possible candidates in uh, Mohammed Abdul Basit and uh, Ahmed Barman and Khalid Al Balochi. Okay, so going back to the definite candidate, Abdullah Rahman, not much doubt about this one. He has uh, started 17 of their 19 games over the past two years and uh, subbed in for one. So just one match that he wasn't selected for. And uh, he has 40 caps since 2019, so has become a staple on the team, uh, Abdullah Ramadan. We expect him to start in the midfield. Uh, next Let's take a look at the three possible candidates, beginning with Mohammed Abdul, Sab, uh, Abdul Basit. So he got his first cap in December of 2022 and started two of the remaining nine games and was subbed in for three and on the bench for two, uh, which makes him look like the likely candidate, except that he wasn't selected for the last two matches. So used for five matches in a row, um, but then on the bench for two and not selected for two. So possible candidate Mohammed Abdul Basit. Uh, Ahmed Barman is the next one. He didn't start any of their games over the last two years, but he was on the bench for two. Uh, and those two appearances, uh, one of them was in September of 2023, so fairly recent uh, there. He has been with the team since 2016 and has 26 caps, Ahmed Barman, but uh, not so much recently. And finally, we have uh, Khalid Al-Balochi, and he got his first two, uh, appearance on the bench in September 2022 and didn't start any games, but was subbed in for two and on the bench for four and not selected for seven others. Uh, he also not selected for the last three games. So at best, he would be a substitute, um, but is in that uh, kind of... A uh, group of players that uh, um, have not been called up recently. So let's uh, take a look now at uh, defensive and uh, central midfielders. So sometimes there's two and sometimes there's three. Uh, Ramadan is almost always there, but it's a bit of a mix and match as to who he's paired with. So Ali Salmin was there quite a bit, uh, but it's Yahya Nader uh, in more recent games. Uh, Hamad Hassan uh, and Abdul Basit are part of the mix that uh, kind of pop up here and there. Um, uh, but the, uh, the other players we mentioned are not really starters. Okay, let's go to the uh, left and right midfielders. And actually, we don't have any candidates uh, as left and right midfielders, even though their formation, especially the 4-3-3, uh, uh, does include them. They don't use that that much. But uh, if you think about the 4-2-3-1, it's probably uh, kind of the central midfielders and then more attacking players. So uh, we do have one of our uh, uh, retired players, Kamis Esmail, uh, who was a right midfielder, but he's been off the team since uh, 2020. Okay, so on we go to uh, left wingers, and we uh, kind of include left wing wingers and left attacking midfielders, maybe even left forwards. So think in terms of the upper left quadrant of the field uh, here. And we have a definite candidate in Ali Salah, Ali Saleh, and uh, two uh, likely candidates in Harib Abdallah and Yaya Al Ghassini. And then one possible candidate in Mohammed Juma. 
Okay, so we're talking about one position here, so uh, we'll sort out uh, why we have one definite and two likely here. Uh, Ali Saleh, or uh, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, Salah or Saleh. I'll go with Saleh, started five of their 19 games over the past two years and was subbed in for eight and on the bench for two. So there were four matches that he was uh, not selected for, but uh, we consider him a definite candidate, though not necessarily a starter. Uh, he subs in a bit more than he starts. But he's very versatile, uh, playing various roles up front. And in fact, only once did he appear as a left winger. Um, uh, I, I think of him more as a central attacking midfielder, uh, actually. But he's been on the team since 2019 with 30 caps and three goals. He's just 23 years old, Ali Saleh. Um, and so uh, coded as a left winger. Anyway, interestingly, he uh, seemed to turn professional at the age of 16 years old because uh, he's been with his club, Al Wassel, uh, since 2016, and he was born in 2000. Uh, okay, um, Harib Abdallah uh, got his... Uh, uh, started 13 of their 19 games over the past two years and was subbed in for three. Uh, and he was with the under-23 team for one game and not selected for the last two matches. So we had to move him down a notch. He seems uh, he seemed not only a definite candidate, but a definite starter up until recently, up until the last three games. So there we have it again uh, with uh, players... Um, who were regularly called up, not being called up under Bento. So uh, Harib Abdallah is uh, 21 years old, but he has 19 caps and two goals since 2020. So a young player, uh, uh, well, firmly in the squad until the last three games. Uh, actually, it's the next candidate, Yaya al Ghassini, who has been playing the position recently. He uh, got his first cap in January 2022 and started only three of their remaining uh, 12 games there. But he was subbed in for seven and uh, on the bench for three. Uh, so uh, we consider him a likely candidate, uh, especially because he started the last two games uh, there. So Yaya al Ghassani, a likely candidate. And uh, finally, here we have Mohamed Juma. So uh, he returned actually after a nine-month absence in September of 2023. So he didn't start any of the three remaining games, but he was subbed in for one and on the bench for another. So yet another player who was kind of brought in under Bento there, having been absent for all of 2023, he returned for the last three games. So a bit hard really to say how likely or uh, possible they are. And it seems like um, it'll be kind of one or the other, either one of the players who uh, was consistently there but not there for the last three games, or else a player like Mohamed Juma, who is coming in recently. Okay, so uh, in terms of the uh, summary for left-wingers, or the narrative, uh, it was uh, Khalil Ibrahim. We didn't actually introduce him because he now seems to be off the squad. Uh, but he last uh, played for the team in March 2022, and he uh, he had the spot uh, uh, in those January and February games. Uh, but from March 2022, he was off the squad, and it was mostly Harib Abdallah, or uh, on some sources he is called Suhai. So Harib Abdallah Suhai. Uh, kind of firmly entrenched in the position until recently when Al Ghassani played the last three games. So, uh, again, I'm kind of uh, anxious to see who's going to be selected for the November games. Uh, okay, over to the right wing, and uh, we only have one candidate, and he's at the uh, possible level, and that is uh, Hazim Mohammed. So Hazim Mohammed got his first cap in September of 2023 and didn't start any of their games, uh, three games since then, but was subbed in for one and on the bench for the two October games. So uh, again, a new consideration uh, for the last three matches. 
Okay, uh, well, on this side, on the right wing, due to the lack of candidates, uh, it is out of position players coming in to play in this role. So forward uh, Canedo, who we will meet soon, uh, and to a lesser degree, attacking midfielder Alzabi, who we'll also meet soon. Um, attacking midfielder Lima was uh, there twice uh, also, uh, one of those times recently. Otherwise, it is left wingers coming across and playing the position from time to time. So kind of a wide variety of players uh, kind of inserted into the spot and the position seems undecided. Again, the November games might shed some light uh, on that. All right, moving on to the forward line, we start with attacking midfielders. And we'll just make quick mention of the uh, two retired players in this position that we talked about at the beginning of the podcast, and that's Ismail Al-Hamadi, who uh, last appeared in December 2019, so quite a while ago, and then Omar Abdul Rahman, who, uh, as we mentioned, kind of came back for a couple of games in May 2022, but otherwise seems to be off the team. So we'll put them in the um, uh, retired, not that they're officially retired, but they're kind of uh, off the team. Maybe we should put them in the uh, off, seem to be off the squad. Uh, but there is a, a, a slight chance of one of them coming back because that happens from time to time, not that I have any uh, information on that. Okay, but let's look at our candidates who've been there recently. And we have Fabio Lima, who I mentioned sometimes plays on the right. He's a likely candidate. And then we have Tanun Alzabi, also uh, sometimes plays on the right. Uh, he's a possible candidate. And then uh, I'll just make quick mention of two possible but unlikely candidates. So the first one is Amr Omar. Uh, Amr Omar uh, returned after more than, uh, well, he returned after an absence in March 2023, and he was on the bench for one game and not selected again. And uh, Amas al Hatas uh, returned after a four year absence for two substitute appearances. Um, that was. Uh, uh, oh, and most recently showed up in September 2023 uh, on the bench. So um, uh, maybe I'll put him, uh, Ahmed al Atas, uh, on the list for possible but unlikely. Uh, however, Amr Omar has not appeared since March of this year. Let's go back and look at the, the main candidates. Fabio Lima. Uh, he was born in uh, Brazil, and he uh, played in Brazil until 2014. And then he moved to UAE and has become a naturalized citizen. So uh, Fabio Lima uh, with the national team since 2020 and already has 22 caps and nine goals. So a fairly important player for them. He started actually just six of the 19 games uh over the past two years and was subbed in for two and on the bench for the last one but he was injured for six of those games and not selected for four others so uh, he's kind of come back into the team more recently sometimes as mentioned playing as a uh, right kind of attacking midfielder and uh, fabio lima a likely candidate um tanun al zabi our possible candidate started four of their 19 games over the past two years and was subbed in for four and on the bench for four. Uh, and uh, so, you know, in 2023, he was actually starting some games, but he's yet another player um, who has not appeared in the last three games. So uh, Tanun Al-Zabi, uh, we had to put as a possible candidate, although earlier in the year, he was looking likely. Uh, okay, so those are the uh, attacking midfielders, and we'll finish with just a little uh, summary. Um, uh, even though it's a 4-3-3, uh, sorry, even though it's a 4-2-3-1, and we should have a central attacking midfielder, it's actually uh, often a central midfielder or left winger, Ali Saleh, who uh, plays in the position uh, when they have it. Uh, but recently, um, uh, Lima and Al Zabi have also appeared in this position, and they are coded as attacking midfielders. 
Okay, uh, we have no secondary strikers, no players coded that way. So we move on to our last category of forwards. And we begin with uh, Shao Canedo, who we've uh, mentioned already, uh, sometimes playing on the right wing. Um, and then the, the big name, Ali Mapkut. Uh, however, Ali Mapkut, uh, only a likely candidate, so I'll tell you why soon. And then uh, three possible candidates in Sebastian Tagliabue, uh, Adil Sultan, uh, sorry, Sultan Adil, I should say, and Isa Kaf, uh, Kalfan, uh, three of those um, uh, possible candidates. So uh, let's begin with Chai, uh, Chao Canedo. Um, so he started 18 of their 19 games from January from over the past two years and subbed in for one other. So you can't get uh, a more likely candidate from that. We have him at the definite level. And again, not always playing as a center forward, but um, uh, sometimes as a right winger. Nevertheless, uh, he uh, is, is always called up and uh, put on the field. Okay, uh, maybe more interesting, Ali Mapkut, and we have him as likely just because he's such a big name on the squad. He is the captain of the team and has been with them since 2009. Get this, an amazing 108 caps. Well, that's not the amazing part. Uh, the amazing part is 82 goals in 108 caps. So uh, that is just under 80%, uh, or I think maybe exactly 80%, uh, uh, score scores a goal in 80% of his games. That is stunning. Even a 50 or 40% ratio is pretty good. Um, so Ali Mabku, we could uh, uh, drone on about him forever uh, because he's been a star in the tournaments. The 2015 Asian Cup, uh, he was fabulous and won the Golden Boot Award. And the 2019 Asian Cup, actually he wasn't part of the... Uh, 2011 Asian Cup, I've just realized that. Uh, but he was, of course, a starter in the 2019 Asian Cup. But let's get on to the uh, uh, the business here uh, of him um, starting only five of their 19 games over the past two years, subbing in for one and on the bench for two and not selected for 10 matches. So that's really the profile of a possible player. And uh, I wonder... Um, uh, what's up with him, but he did return for the uh, last match there, so uh, still uh, in the plans of Bento it seems, uh, but because of his reputation we've left him as a um, as a likely candidate. Okay, next is uh, Sebastian Tag uh, Tagliabu, he is Argentinian, Tagliabue, uh, he was born in Argentina, um, he's actually 38 years old, so uh, really kind of getting up there in age. And he's been with the team since 2020 with 19 caps and five goals. Only started one of their games over the past two years, though. But he was subbed in for six. Uh, however, he was not selected for 10 matches, including the last five. So almost um, tempted to put him down to possible, but unlikely, especially given his age. But uh, we'll leave him as a possible candidate. Uh, next is Sultan Adil. So he got his first cap in March 2022 and started one of their remaining 17 games, just one. Uh, but he was subbed in for two and on the bench for four. So that leaves nine matches that he was not selected for. He's just 19 years old, uh, but has three caps since 2022. So Sultan Adil uh, came back into the squad in March 2023 and then disappeared again. So also seeming uh, more kind of possible but unlikely level. And finally, we have uh, the opposite case, uh, Isa Kaf uh, Kalfan, who is brand new to the squad, appearing on the bench twice in 2023. And he is uh, 20 years old. And um, yes, on the bench for the last two. So there again, uh, in, encapsulated in that in in those players, uh, two players who have kind of uh, who are off the squad, and one player coming in brand new. So um, a little difficult to say 
uh, who uh, the manager will go with uh, there. Although I got to say, Tagliabue and uh, Sultan Adil have been off the squad for more than just the past three games uh, there. Okay, uh, that brings us to the end of the forwards and um, to the end of our look at the candidates. So we'll finish with some closing thought. And I alluded to it uh, right there by saying the big question is, uh, is he going to go with the players who have been on the field con uh, consistently uh, or kind of uh, selected consistently over the uh, past two years, but then not in the last three games? Or is he going to go with the players that he has brought in for those three games? Uh, that's a big question, and we'll be looking at the November squad uh, closely to check that out as it may uh, give some insight into the squad that they will bring to the Cup. So, uh, looking uh, on to part two, a preview of part two. Um, when the squad is released in, in late December or early November, we're going to go through it and uh, look at the candidates uh, that we've compiled here, and we will note any no, any notable non-selection. So that would be likely or definite candidates who do not make the squad, and then any surprise inclusions. So that would probably be um, the possible but unlikely, or uh, players who seem to be off the squad, who we mostly didn't even mention here, uh, but who are brought back into the squad. And uh, also, uh, we'll talk about any new players that come in, which seems to be happening under the uh, uh, new manager, Paolo Bento. And finally, we'll give an update on any injuries uh, that we see prior to the Cup. It's a bit too early to do it, and I don't recall seeing any kind of long-term injuries uh, among these players that would rule them out even at this point. But uh, uh, when we get closer to the Cup, uh, we may have some information on the injuries. Okay, well, that uh, concludes our look at the uh, UAE's players, or at least part one, and uh, we hope you join us for part two. We originally planned to tag on our past, present, and future plans for the media cast, but we have instead decided to put a link to that 10-minute video in the show notes. It covers what we're working on and what we plan to do over the next nine months. I'd like to thank Navar Abacham and Pixabay for the wonderful music you hear in this media cast. The title is called Arabic Trap.